Hey everyone, I'm Kyle, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make an intelligent proportional line follower that adjusts its speed based off of error values. A typical proportional line follower creates a simple feedback loop between a color sensor and the EV3 brick, where the light intensity values measured by the color sensor are used to adjust the robot's steering to the left and to the right in order to make corrections that keep the robot on the desired target path. However, the line follower that I was showing you today takes that one step further, where on top of making steering corrections, this smart line follower will also, will also make power corrections. And it does this by monitoring previous error values, that is how far it has deviated from its target path, and if the error values are large, then it will slow down its power and help it get back on track. Pretty smart, huh? If you haven't already, I highly recommend that you watch my original video on proportional line following, and I'll put the link to that video right up here. The reason why you might want to watch that is because that original video teaches all of the foundation concepts behind line following, which you'll need to make today's line follower. So if you haven't already, go watch that video and it'll help you understand today's video a lot better. The program that I'm showcasing in this week's video was created by a viewer on my channel named Bendik Skarpness. Bendik is from Norway and formerly a part of FLL Team Gozen. Bendik saw some of my videos and was inspired to create even cooler versions of my programs. And so big thanks to Bendik for providing these programs to me so I can share them with you today. With my EV3 programming software open, I can now give you a walkthrough for this intelligent proportion line follower. As you can see at the very end, it all gets compressed into this one MyPlock that has a whole bunch of different inputs, so you can customize the line follower's performance without having to actually go into the programming. And I'll be expanding this MyBlock in just a minute to show you its inner workings. This MyBlock needs to be placed inside of a loop of some kind in order to continuously follow the line. And so that's just an important note if you plan on using something like this. Anyway, let's go over the inputs. The first input allows you to choose which port the color sensor is plugged into. The second is a true or false for mirroring the left and the right corrections. So that's how you mirror the turns that the line follower will make depending on whether you're on the left side or the right side of the line when following. This third one is a forward backward which mirrors the power value. This is important for my robot Sirius which drives forward when you give it negative power. Next you set up your maximum speed which is pretty straightforward. Then there's speed factor, which is the proportional constant that controls how large of a speed change that the line follower makes when the error gets big. This is something you could play around with uh, with your robot because this line follower will decrease the speed of the line following when the error becomes large, which you'll see in just a moment. Then you have your target light intensity, which is just the same as any other proportional line follower and also you have your steering factor or KP which is also from a standard proportional line follower so now that we've seen the, the my block let's expand it to see its inner workings this tab shows you all of the programming that's happening inside of the my block at the very beginning here you can see all of those parameters from the my block are saved in variables of the same name so they can be used in the program later. I've covered my blocks and parameters in a previous tutorial so you can go check that out he over here if you'd like to uh, see how to do something like that. So anyway after all of those parameters are saved in variables then we move on to the first actual step of the line following which is where the program will read what port you've chosen for your color sensor and then it will compare the color sensor's reflected light intensity to the target light intensity that you've set. So it takes the target minus the sensor's reading and stores that as an error. So, so far this is pretty much what you'd see in a normal proportional line follower. This next step right here is where it starts to deviate from the proportional line follower that I've covered previously. And this is the step that adjusts the robot's speed based on the previous error. So right here is the forward backward variable that we mentioned before. So this is the true false variable that you set. So you set it to false if the robot drives forward with negative power. And it executes one of these switch cases depending on what you've chosen. They're pretty much the same so I'll go over the top one first and then explain the differences. So up here this is the programming for adjusting the robot's line following speed based on the error values that are being perceived. So how it works is first it takes the error that it calculated before and it takes the previous error. 
So it subtracts the two, so it goes error minus last error, and takes the absolute value of it. So then it will multiply that by the factor speed, which is the constant that adjusts the scaling for the speed corrections. And then the final step will be subtracting maximum speed minus that calculated adjustment that it made. So you can see the equation is up here in the math block. So the B minus C is error minus last error, and it takes the absolute value. Then it multiplies by D, which is the factor speed, and then that creates an adjustment. Then it goes A minus all of that. So that's maximum speed is A minus the adjustment gives you the new speed that the robot will follow at. And then if you go down here to this false case, the only difference is that it multiplies the whole entire result by negative 1 to make the robot drive in the opposite direction. Because as I mentioned before, this is for robots that drive forward with negative power, like my robot Sirius. Next we move on to this stage, which makes the steering correction. It's very similar to how it works in a normal proportional line follower. So here it reads your choice for the left and the right uh, flipping. And this right here will take the error, multiply by the KP value, this time called factor steering, and then that will become your steering correction. And then the only difference between the top and bottom is that the bottom multiplies by negative 1 to make the robot steer in the opposite direction. So what that means in context of the line follower is that when you're setting up this parameter for the, the steering mirror, if you select true, that's for line following on the right side of the line. If you subtract, uh, if you choose false, that's for line following on the left side of the line. So the way I set up my sensor is uh, on Sirius is the light sensor is on the left side of the line, so I chose false when I set it up. And then finally, it's going to take the calculated steering correction and the calculated speed and then plug that into a move steering block so that the robot can drive around. And then the last few steps here, it saves the error as the last error, which is something I kind of covered in my PID line follower video. Because as you saw before, when it calculates the speed correction, it uses both the current error and the last error, which is basically almost acting like a derivative to calculate the speed adjustment. And then it's going to print the speed to the EV3 display which is a helpful debugging tool so you can see what's going on. If you'd like to learn more about programming EV3 displays, I have a tutorial and you can click up here. And then remember what I said before, you can see the programming kind of just falls off a cliff here, so if you want to use this line follower, you're going to have to place it inside of a loop. Anyway, these are all of the values that I've chosen for Sirius. This is how I've optimized the intelligent line follower for my robot. So sensor in port 1, I have left right set to false so I can follow on the left side of the line. Also forward backward is set to false. That's because negative power makes my robot drive forward. My maximum speed is 35. The speed scale factor is 5. So that means that the speed correction will go in increments of 5. So if 35 is the maximum speed, if it drops it down by 1 increment, then it goes down to 30. If it drops down by 2 increments, it goes down to 25, and so on and so forth. And then this is the target light intensity, which I measured to be 35 in port view. And then finally, my KP is 0 0.6. So let's try out this line follower. Thank you for watching my tutorial this week. If you haven't already, click here to check out my new book. It's called Building Smart LEGO Mindstorm PV3 Robots, and it's now available on Amazon. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this every Thursday. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, drop your suggestion in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.